the diamond sutra the wheel of dham which is music there is in a harmony and bliss this is subtle nobody can see it but when this begins to overflow in the outer world through choice of words gaps it creates a music it creates a space within you it connects you to the space that the master is and you begin to drown in it the music that flows from within must connect both the master and the disciple do you know how do i write my posts i strange thing i sleep with my iphone on the bed i have opened all the social media apps all of a sudden the call the phone rings a question is there 11 o'clock in the night wake up with that call read the question line on the bed respond to that then post on the timeline and go back to sleep the last few posts on is suffering illusion is suffering illusion and someone ask master i want to be your student 11:30 call and another was on music wake up in the middle of night with the call when someone calls you at that hour with that kind of question it becomes the responsibility of the awakened one to respond to that now because iron is hot you can hit the iron and shape it only when it is hot when it is cold you cannot and what is that state of awareness that the awakened one lives sleeping wakes up with the call writes the message and posts read these and you will see the the nature the intensity the depth and the effect it will create on the reader it will create groups in your consciousness connect you to your inner space and this particular message will bridge the disciple and the awakened one it was not so intense earlier on because the more i respond to this it becomes spontaneous simple easy and there is no disturbance in my sleep pattern or in my rest pattern it is as if it is happening naturally without any effort again there was last night a message from asif email i read it but i did not open it i read the email the font was a small but with the light of the iphone you can read it i respond to that immediately in the subtle way and if it is necessary to respond to the person because the subtle messages are difficult to decipher unless 
the subtlety of this message is put into the words and in a particular arrangement that it becomes a rhythmic, a musical and a musical symphony. The things go on like this. The wheel of dham. Here the two words are used. Gautam Buddha is speaking, but he is giving the message of Tathagat. Gautam Buddha has a physical presence as well because he is body, mind and intellect as well. And Tathagat is the subtle presence of Buddha, the Ruh of Buddha. So Vajra Chedika Prajna Paramat Sutra of Gautam Buddha continues with the overflow from Venerable Tathagat. Buddha is speaking, but he is giving the message that is being communioned into him from the unknown and unknowable from Ru. He is connecting the state of Ru, his state of Ru, in the manifested form that is easily understandable by the listener. Because a bodhisattva who gives a gift should not be supported by a thing, nor should he be supported anywhere. First the actual words of the sutra and then explanation. Because a bodhisattva who gives a gift should not be supported by a thing, nor should he be supported anywhere. The great being should give gift in such a way that he is not supported by the notion of a sign, just gives. And why? because the help of merit of that Bodhi being who unsupported gives a gift, it is not easy to measure. The Lord continued, What do you think, Subhuti? Can the Tathagat be seen by the possession of this mark? The Lord continued, What do you think, Subhuti? Can the Tathagat be seen by the possession of his marks? Subhuti replied, No indeed, O Lord. We use the word B for Tathagat, but not for the Lord. So Subhuti says, No indeed, O Lord. And why? What has been taught by Tathagat as the possession of marks? That is truly no possession of any mark, the Lord said. Wherever there is possession of marks, there is fraud. Wherever there is no possession of no mark, there is no fraud. Hence the Tathagat is to be seen from no mark as mark. Is a subtle presence. The message flows. Subhati asked, Will there be any being in the future period? Will there be any being in the future being, in the last time, in the last epoch, in the last 500 years, at the time of the collapse of good doctrine, who, when these words of the Sutra are being taught, will understand their truth? Subhati asked, Will there be any being in the future, in future period, in the last time, in the last epoch, in the last 500 years, at the time of the collapse of the good doctrine, who, when these words of the Sutra are being taught, will understand their truth? The Lord replied, Do not speak thus, Subhuti. 
do not speak the truth yes even then there will be beings who when these words of the sutra are being taught will understand their truth their essence for even at that time subhuti there will be bodhisattvas and these bodhisattvas subhuti will not be such as have honored only one single buddha nor such as have planted their roots of merit under one single buddha only lord kanchi on the contrary subhuti those bodhisattvas who when these words of the sutra are being taught will find even one single thought of serene faith be such as have honored many hundreds of thousands of buddhas such as have planted their roots of merit under many hundreds of thousands of buddhas known they are subhuti to the tathagat tathagat knows all the past buddhas and those who will come in future known they are subhuti to the tathagat through his bodhi cognition seen they are subhuti by the tathagat with his bodhi eye fully known they are subhuti to tathagat and they will subhuti will begit and acquire an immeasurable and incalculable heap of merit therefore subhuti listen when therefore subhuti listen well and attentively overflows gautam the buddha these are strange words of tathagat in these these words are strange because buddha is addressing a bodhisattva not an ordinary person when you have to speak to a very intelligent person of a high intuitive intellect i use the word intuitive level of in, intellect you have to be cautious in choice of your words and that is what you all are now i have to be cautious in choice of the words their arrangements they would not have been as strange if they were addressed to an ordinary human being one can understand that the ordinary human being needs to listen well to listen is so difficult to listen means to be here now to listen means to be without any thought or precondition conceived conditioning to listen means to be alert awake and available to this very moment if these conditions are fulfilled only then you listen and the message will enter your being the mind has its ways and means mind continues like a fanatic inside mind lives in its self created world of ignorance and negation of truth and in the process it goes on spinning a thousand and one thoughts the mind continues to move all over the world riding the vehicle of the past and the future how can then the mind listen and whatsoever it listens to will not be the right listening at all mind is you it is your creation you will live the mind that survives on the past and future and both exist no more one is gone the other is not yet 
in that case you will listen to something else which has not been said at all you will go on missing that which is said you will not be in tune with now here a space where both space and time merge into one another there is neither space nor time it is merger of the two a new dimension is born you will listen to the words of course because you are not deaf but just that much is not listening remember words are the carrier of the eternal message and message will not reach you this is the reason jesus goes on saying to his disciples if you have ears listen if you have eyes see those disciples were neither blind nor deaf they had eyes as healthy as you have ears as good as you have but jesus words are not strange they are relevant he is talking to ordinary people so he has to bring their attention he has to shout but buddha's words are strange he is not addressing to ordinary people instead he is addressing a bodhisattva a great being a bodhi being one who is just on the verge of becoming a buddha is still buddha says therefore subuti listen well and attentively this is always needed what does it mean exactly when he says so to listen well ordinarily means to listen in a receptive mood in deep receptivity when you listen if you are arguing or judging or inner dialogue continues like undercurrent that this is right because it fits with my ideology and this is not right because it does not appeal to me appeal to me logically this is right and that is not right this i can believe and that i cannot if you are continuously sorting out things inside you are listening but then you are not listening in reality although you are listening but your past mind is interfering who is this judging it is not you if awakening has come certainly it is your past you have read a few things you have heard a few things too also you have been conditioned for few things all these past conditions will go on continuously interfering the past wants to perpetuate itself it does not allow anything that can disrupt its way of life it does not allow anything new it only allows the old that fits with it that is what happens when you judge you criticize or discuss inside and debate to listen rightly means to listen obediently the word obedience is beautiful it comes from the root obedia it means thorough listening mind wanders why does obedience implies a thorough listening are they the same thing yes they are same if you listen totally and thoroughly you will indeed obey if truth is there you will obey you will not need any decision on your part because truth is self evident truth is eternal 
It is beyond time and space. There are three things that never change. The sun, the moon and truth never changes for anyone, time or space. And once heard, it automatically begins part of you. Then you will follow it. Once heard, you will become obedient to it. Hence this word obedience comes from obedir, meaning listening thoroughly. The Jewish trad tradition says, bear your ears. If you have really opened your ears and there is no interference and no disturbance inside and no distraction from anywhere, you will not have only opened your ears, you have opened your heart indeed. Because it is directly connected. And when the seeds fall into the fertile soil of the heart, sooner or later seed will begin to sprout first and then grow into a tree. And then bloom comes. You will reap the fruits at the dawn of new awakening. The seed may take a little time for it to become a tree. It will have to wait for the right season, for the spring of consciousness to come. But it will become a tree. You will obey it if you have heard the truth. This is the reason the mind does not allow you to hear anything. Remember the mind is aware of the fact that once truth is heard, then there is no way to escape. So if you want to escape, it is better not to hear. Once heard and you are caught in that, then there is no escape. That is why the master looks at your innerness and waits for the moment when you are ready to pour into you his presence, his being. So you cannot escape. How can you escape when you know what truth is? The very phenomena that you know what truth is creates a discipline in you. You start following it. And remember it is not something that you enforce upon yourself. Instead it comes on its own accord. All blocks have to be removed from the airs. What are these air blocks? The fear of truth is the basic block. You are afraid of truth. Nevertheless, what you say, notwithstanding that you again and again say, I want to know the truth. But when you use the word truth, you are in fact using the word or meaning facts. There is a difference between truth and facts. You remain afraid of truth. You are afraid of truth because you have lived with lies all your life and you have lived in lies so long that all those lies are afraid, trembling. If truth comes, they will have to leave you. They possess you. Just as darkness is afraid of light, so too lies are afraid of truth. The moment you come closer to truth, the mind will become very restless. It will create much stir and much dust and also clouds around you so that you can hear what truth is. Those air blocks have to be removed first. The basic block is fear. 
you are locked in fear. Buddha had said that unless you are fearless, you will not be able to attain to truth. Buddha had said that unless you are fearless, you will not attain to truth. And look at your religions and what they have done. Your so-called religions are based in fear. And through fear, there is no way to know truth. Fearlessness knows what truth is. And fearlessness becomes your quality. When you bow down in a church or in a mosque or in a temple or to a statue or to, the, to a scripture or to a tradition, from where is your bowing coming? Just watch inside and you will find fear at the base of all your actions, understanding and worship. Out of fear there can be no trust. Remember all so-called faith are based on fear. That is why it is very rare in the world to come across a man who has faith. Because faith happens only when fear has disappeared completely. Faith is the disappearance of fear. Faith means trust. How can a fearful man trust? He is always thinking. He is always cunning. He is always protecting and defending as well. How can he trust? To trust you need courage. To trust you need to be brave. To trust, you need to be able to risk. To trust, you need to move into danger. The Chinese ideogram for crisis insists of two symbols. One is the symbol of danger and other is the symbol of opportunity. Indeed, the moment is critical when you are facing danger and opportunity both. Both come together. If you do not go into danger, you will miss the opportunity. If you want opportunity, you will have to go into danger and embrace it. Who knows how to live dangerously? Only those who know how to live dangerously, only they are religious. Only such a person is fearless. Fear is therefore the basic air block. And there are other blocks as well. However, these arise out of fear. Judging, argumentation, clinging with the past and not allowing the new any entry into your being. In many forms and languages, the word for obedience is an intensive form of the word listening. All these words simply imply passionate, intense and total listening. Yet still, there is one thing more. You will be surprised to know that the word Absurd is exactly opposite of obedience. Absurdus implies you are absolutely deaf. So if you say something is absurd, you are simply implying I am absolutely deaf to what this is going to be. But it is good to say to an ordinary human being, listen attentively. But Buddha says this to Subhuti. Why? There is something very significant in it and this has to be understood. Each word is meaningless by itself. The meaning is created only when word is addressed to someone. To whom it is addressed, 
will determining determine the meaning so you cannot find the meaning in any dictionary because dictionaries are not written for bodhisattvas all dictionaries are written for ordinary human beings now look back at the sutra what does this mean when buddha tells subhuti listen well and attentively why is he using two words listen well and attentively it implies a few things which have to be understood first when a man like subhuti is there there is no question of ear blocks there is no question of his opening to buddha and there is no doubt about it he is utterly open there is no doubt he is no longer arguing with buddha he is totally with him and flowing with buddha energy however when a person has attained to bodhisattva bodhisattva hood when one has come very close to buddha hood there arises a few problems remember each new stage of consciousness has its own problem this is the problem with the bodhisattva he is open he is receptive he is ready but has become uprooted from the body his heart is open his being is open but he is no longer rooted in the body he has become detached from the body the body is just hanging around he does not live in the body he is almost unidentified with the body its instruments and all that these instruments create and that is the problem this is what has happened to ram krishna when he said i have nothing to hold on to this earth to stay on this shore a bodhisattva creates temporary anchors and the moment the work is over the bodhisattva disappears in the realm of buddhas he sails to the other shores when someone says to you listen well he implies that your body is listening but you are not when buddha says this to subhuti he means you are listening but your body is not listening it is just the opposite when you listen your body is here but you are not the words reach to the ears they make sound and there is noise and from the other ear that goes out they never reach your being your being does not touch them with a man like subhuti just the opposite is the case he is there but his body is not there he has lost track of the body he forgets he tends to forget the body there are moments when he will not think of the body at all he will be there but body will not be there he has come to the state of bodylessness remember for listening both body and soul needs to be together in you the body is present but the soul is absent in subhuti the soul is present and the body is absent when a buddha speaks or sermons both his body and soul are present i am speaking to you i know where the words are coming from how the words are happening spontaneously gaps are created the choice of the words and i know the inner presence 
is manifesting through these words, their arrangements and gaps. When a Buddha speaks a sermon, both his body and soul and soul are present. This is not the case with Subhuti. A Buddha can be in the body and yet not in the body. He knows well that body is a temple for the soul to be enshrined. He has found that secret passage that he can move from the body to the being and from being to the body just as you know the passage between your bedroom and the living room. You rest, you sojourn, cherish your solitude in the bedroom, but when you have to meet someone, when you have to commune with someone, you have to come to the living room. You know very well the passage. Buddha needs the body as well as being. He communicates the being through the instrument of the body. He knows the passage well. He can move from body to the being any moment. But you are in the body. You have not experienced the connection. So his presence creates that connection between your body and the mind. Subhuti is one who has known the soul, known the being, but he has become completely oblivious of the body. So there is no connection. A Buddha can be in the body and not in the body. He knows well that body is the temple for the soul to be enshrined. This is a lesson in Buddhahood. This is the difference between a Buddha and a Bodhisattva. Although the Bodhisattva gets the glimpses of Buddhahood, these are still far away. And this is the reason Buddha says, Subhuti, Subhuti, listen well. Bring your body here. Let your body function. Get into the body. Be rooted in the body because the body is the vehicle. The body is the instrument, the medium. Buddha continues and attentively. Does Subhuti lack attention? That is not possible, otherwise he would not be a Bodhi being. A Bodhi being is one who, is a, who has attained to attention who is aware, who is alert, who is conscious and who is no more a robot, then why does Buddha say be attentive, listen attentively? Again a different meaning has to be understood. A man like Subhuti tends to go in words.